Ah, there he is. Yeah, there Hi. he is. Hi. The boss. Hi, Ted. <laughs> Welcome. And we can't wait to see what you guys are going to talk about because... Um, about the weather. <laughs> the weather. Are you in Bucharest now? Yes. yes. And Bucharest is, forgive me, Romania, Romania. Bulgaria? Romania. Yeah. Romania. Yeah. We are having COVID. <laughs> could be, yes. could be. I'm for COVID jewelry, Rudy. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. So how many people do you expect then? Uh, um, there were um, registered like 250. Oh, my God. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's great. Eh? That's really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Related to gold, of course. Yeah. yeah. Your hair is fine, Ted. <laughs> There's some oh yeah no it's oh, always, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always very good that uh, that is it always goes to the to the beauty uh, salon. Uh, <laughs> I forgot to put on my lipstick because he, he has a filter that put a filter on that all his wrinklings are gone. Mm. <laughs> so are you ready to to start to give the acceptance to? Yeah. 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 Ah. Oh, they're all. Hallelujah. Hello. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. People are starting to enter the rooms. It's yeah, great. Wonderful. So nice to see you all. <laughs> Thousands. <laughs> Hundreds of you. Hundreds. <laughs> I think everybody can see how many. Hey, Nicole. Hello. Nice to meet you. To, hi, to Rich. Good hi, to see hi. You. Oh, I, oh, I, my God, I get a beer here. It's a zero, zero, so it's okay. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> nice to see people from all over the world. Hello, Dan. How are you? <laughs> ah, Hello. I see Martin Versteeg. Yeah. Martin. <laughs> And Elisa. Yes, I'm here. I see you. Okay. Okay. Martin. And Nina Lima. And uh, Marta Costa. Marta. That is not going up. Yeah, and thank you. Rubek. I'm so happy to join. Okay. Hello to everyone. My name is Dan Piercinaru, and I'm the director and founder of Autor, uh, which is mainly a platform for contemporary jewelry based in Bucharest. Romania, Southeast Europe, more precisely. And um, we started with a fair and the fair is still our main event by ourselves. Okay, so I'm really glad to have you here because this is our first Zoom. This is our first live. And I'm really, really happy with the three guests that we have here tonight. I'm really sure that you know all of them. Anyway, I will start with Ruth because he is the first one that I met. Uh, do you remember we met seven years ago in Munich? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it was my first time there. I was with my colleague Liana back then and it was your exhibition. Um, uh, it was more of an installation, I remember, with the bodies and uh, so on. And uh, back then, it was my first ex uh, my first experience in Munich, and uh, somehow I, I was new in the domain. And you were so cheering, you were so open to us that I felt really encouraged to talk to you and to, you know, to connect to somebody that I just knew from other people. Because the first time I heard about you was uh, when you were a teacher in Alchemia. And there were people from Romania, artists from Romania coming and studying with you there, you know? So I knew about you, but I was not really shy, but I was kind of, you know, not that self-confident in order to come to talk to somebody so known. But again, what I like about you is that you are really open and you talk to everybody in a very, very normal way and very cheerful. And somehow you, you take time for everybody and I don't think it's something easy to do you know 
but you give a lot of energy in uh, meeting people and connecting with them. And I think this is amazing. Um, were you at that opening of uh, Corpus? Yes. And you were, uh, you got also a peace of mind. You were in the early 2250 ones or not? Uh, if you say so, <laughs> I no. don't remember that. <laughs> no, then then you were too late. You were too late on the opening. Sorry for that. <laughs> I was too late. You see? Oh, damn it. Next time. I hope to catch one. And um, you also, after one year, two years, you became one of the members in Autor Fair, the jury member. And um, again, I'm really grateful to, to you. Uh, we kept this... Uh, activity together this collaboration for like uh, five years maybe and uh, you've been always um, so generous and i'm not really trying to fish uh, here for something you, you've been giving uh, comments and you've been taking your time to to say something about each artist which was really really important to us thank you thank you a lot and um, Hope to meet you soon in real because it's so fun to talk to you, really. So uh, we'll continue with Lisbeth, which I have a little bit of a different experience that with Ruth because I was so eager to 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 meet you, Lisbeth, and because I knew you were on this uh, curatorial and critical part, and you are a writer and an author uh, about contemporary jewelry, and I felt a little bit like. Uh, student going to a very much appreciated teacher, you know, and I was so uh, shy on uh, speaking to you. And I remember that it was in 2019, two years ago, um, in Schmuck again. I'm so sorry that Schmuck is not happening this year again, but well, it is what it is. Um, and I was approaching you or speaking with a very famous artist uh, back then and I was just waiting and I came to you and you've been really nice and you said to me, oh Dan, um, please, me, uh, please tell me again, what is again Outdoor Magazine? <laughs> 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 and I was like, oh, oh, that's so nice. But mm -hmm. I was saying also, oh, but I sent you already the magazine. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I don't know if you remember the discussion, it was in Messe. It mm -hmm. was very close to the talent area. And uh, I, was, uh, I was really happy to, to have your interest on our magazine because, you know, I mean, people are looking at you and uh, Ted and Ruth like, you know, they look up to you. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess, of course, students, they do that uh, naturally, but also the others, you know, and mm. sometimes it's hard to talk to everybody, I guess, and because it's, you know, could take time and you don't have the disponibility or the energy all the time, but I was really, really glad that you, you are asking about us because it's like a recognition sign, you know. Yeah, that's true. And that's the only thing you can do in such circumstances, because there are so many people who want to talk with you and Sometimes I, I like it, but it's so difficult. You see other people waiting and it's, yeah, it's, it's a strange situation always. But of course I remember you and of course I know about author. <laughs> I think I just wanted to say something to say, okay, I know who you are. <laughs> yes, and you made my day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And um, it's true that I didn't meet yet Ted Norton, mm. uh, but I really, really hope to meet you soon in real, Ted. Are you sure? Yes, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure. When I'll come next time to Amsterdam. Because I make oh, bad jewelry, you know. Bad jewelry. I'm not afraid of guns. Okay. I'm, I'm afraid of gold. Ah, <laughs> that's why you start doing the study in uh, Hasselt? Uh, yes, exactly. You know, I have to, to make a, a peace with, uh, get at peace with this uh, situation, uh, you know, being afraid of gold. But I have to say that I remember very clear the moment I was um, imprinting my name on, on, on my mind, you know. It was back then, maybe in 2013, 
And I think it was before knowing about Ruth and uh, Lisbeth. And it was because you made a course in Antwerp at the Academy. And back then you had a lovely, lovely project about a wedding ring. Oh, yeah. Not like the one that you showed me before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, if it's you remember, we you. had uh, these beautiful pictures with you in oh, our yeah. um, first edition of the magazine. I think we ah, remember. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. Because Sorry. Yeah. We are stalking you to send it. it. Please. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, send, send me a copy. I think um, I must have it somewhere. But. <gasps> I yeah, it was a lovely project, yeah. It was a lovely project, and I have to say openly that I was in love with the pictures. You know, you and your beautiful wife are just amazing here. And even now, it's one of my favorite that I saw in contemporary jewelry. Nice to hear. Thank you. Yes. I mean, I think uh, the way you, you manage, uh, because I had somebody which was in, in the class back then, uh, Mara Grigoriu, and she told me about the experience with you, and she said that it was so enriching to have you as a tutor and uh, seeing yep. this, uh, this beautiful project coming uh, in history like this. And you know, it's amazing because uh, you took on a per I think on a very personal note, I mean, you, you went with somebody really personal in this project, and I think this is amazing. I mean, you don't really see that that often, you know, in schools. Mm. But it will be different in Masierad. Don't give me too many compliments, because... Uh... <laughs> I will give you just one. You can go to Hollywood and you will make it. You and your... Oh. <laughs> yeah. I Thank can you very much, man. But then oh. the, 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 the project was the reason that you married afterwards. Yeah, yeah, this was the, the, the concept that the students, if they managed to make a ring, a wedding ring for my girlfriend and me, uh, if we would both agree on the same ring, that would mean that we had, had to marry. I mean, yeah. and you did. We did, but I don't think yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the yeah, yeah, biggest we, consequence of it. You did it. After so yeah. many years of promising Clamy to marry you, know? yeah, I, 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 that, is, that was and good. I, I, and it's also your only, your first uh, shoot in blue, what I saw. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, great. It's so nice. Now you're a gentleman. No, yeah, also. <laughs> it's, always been. it's coming, it's coming. Oh, I, I forgot to, to, to tell you that I have the book of Lisbeth here, you know, I, from time to time I read it because I never finish it, Lisbeth, you know, but I think it's, it, it's a great one, you know, so people should have it if they're really interested in contemporary jewelry. It's uh, still for sale. Yeah, it, it's still on sale, right? You yes, it's still it. on yeah, sale, okay. but I do ho hope to write a, a new one in the near future. But How I need much did you... Did you spend, I mean, how much time did you, did you invest in making this book? I'm just curious, I was asking. Well, it, it took four years, but in this time also my, my mother died, my father went very, but so there were a lot of personal things that went very wrong in my life. And I had other jobs, of course. So it took me four years. And the next one, I have to do it faster because it's crazy to work for four years on one book. Unfortunately, we don't have a uh, Haish Becker. Becker, Becker. Very good pronunciation. Fantastic. Thank <laughs> you. I was doing my best, you know. Unfortunately, he is not here to hear me. But um, I will just briefly say that um, he also made a book many years ago. And that book is uh, named Chia Paura. It's in Italian, who is afraid, I, if I'm not mistaken. And I have to say it here publicly that that book back then was kind of my first contact with contemporary jewelry. And mm -hmm. it was my first way to understand that contemporary jewelry, it's so rich in ideas, can be so intelligent, you know, so be so full of content. And back then I found this little book because it's a very, very nice one, you know, but just uh, in a library in Bucharest. And I think it was 15 years ago. 
So the books that you make, the exhibitions that you make, sometimes are like, you know, like, like a bottle in, a, in an ocean, you know, uh, traveling somewhere, you have no idea where, you know, and somebody is picking it and can be influenced by it. And it was my case. Can I say something, Dan? Yes. Because it is interesting, I think, that you mentioned this book or this project, Kia Paura, because for Gijs Bakker, this is really a very important part of his philosophy. This is about industrial jewelry, trying to design jewelry that can be made in series and keeps on being interesting even though more people are wearing it and that is one of his main things um, and that will be his position I think in the education as well to make students aware of the fact that you don't need to make only one-off pieces of jewelry and that making as a matter of fact making industrial jewelry is a big big challenge it's very difficult. So Absolutely. this is something he is very keen on. Uh, so it's it's very interesting that you mentioned this project. Yeah, it will be part of the education in households. Yeah. Also industrial thinking. Yeah, that's why we have four different teachers, and all four different teachers have four uh, partner teachers. Mm -hmm. So, so we have a lot of different entrances and starting points of what you can do with jewelry, and that that is exactly what we try to find a new way to make the jewelry again diverse and not only in one, two, three, four directions. Some of you already saw it, but I think it's important to see it. Maybe we can have uh, more videos during the, our um, chat, you know, because Ruth can uh, drink his beer. <laughs> okay, yeah, I did. <laughs> you know, alcohol, you promise. No, I, it's, only, it's only zero, zero beer. I have my dry, dry uh, January, yeah. Okay, I believe you. Uh, you know what I like about this video? I mean, from a personal point of view, I like a little bit the idea of this uh, biographical uh, images that I saw there, you know, seeing uh, Lisbeth, I think that it was a little girl with a necklace. My first made one, three years old. <laughs> wow. Yes. I didn't know that. And yeah. also seeing Ruth with all his glasses. Yeah, yeah, very <laughs> funny. See? 
I mean, you know, I've always been impressed by your glasses. You know, it's like a trademark. Yeah, it's it, it becomes uh, at the moment the branding. Yeah, uh, uh -huh. without, without glasses, I'm not. I'm totally at something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I will invite you to do something that I don't know if you did it before, but it's very, very easy, you know, and I learned it from uh, some amazing Dutch people, you know, because I was studying two years uh, a class, it, not a master class, but it was in biographical work with uh, Rinke Vizier and Jozin de Vries uh, from Netherlands, you know, and I will invite you, if you want to accept, to introduce you to the other, I mean, for example, I will ask Ted to introduce Ruth, you know, and Ted, if you want to tell us in a very short and very personal way, how do you perceive Ruth and how will you present Ruth to the world? Uh, you, you, you want a nice version, a, a horrible version or a soft version? Combined, make a, make a combination. Well, Rudy is... Um, I call him Rudy because that is a nickname that uh, represents also that he's just a nice guy. I mean, he had, tends to be a little bit to be a wizard. You know, he talks about alchemy and making from dirt on the street. He likes to make gold and he likes us to believe it. I mean, that is his power. But um, I think he is also in the school. He's the one that... Uh, talks about emotions, about esoteric, about, he's not a rationalist, he's a, a, a man with a lot of feelings. And I think that is also important uh, as part of the team, that he is a nice, a nice man. Yeah. So yeah, Rudy, take some Valium drugs to recover from this. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy. Uh, Lisbeth, it will be a winner, uh, witness, uh, uh, martyr. How do you say, uh, Maria Martor? Witness. I mean, she will witness you because uh, she has to correct something at the end. You know, I forgot to tell you that, uh, Lisbeth, uh, just before. You know, mm -hmm. so if you not agree with Ted or Rudy, you can correct something. You know, there is a second chance. You okay. have to make an oh. observation. Oh, okay, good. Okay. I'm sure. So, uh, Ruth. Uh, please introduce yeah. us, uh, introduce to us uh, Ted Norton. Oh, he takes okay. revenge. He takes revenge. Uh, um, no, I don't take revenge. Ted is crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, Ted is a little baby. And that is the great thing on Ted, because he is so open and he is so eager and he is all the time doing things what is in normal life. He represents normal life, like stories about someone who he met in the train, yeah? And the guy was talking about uh, his shoes and he put layers of gold in his shoes. And then the next exhibition, these shoes are there on the show. And that is exactly what I love on Ted, that he, he makes life directly, it's, it's like one-on-one, -on -one, yeah? It's his life, and his jewelry is. Yeah, okay. that's true. Well, if, if you put it in a more intelligent way, we call that context. No, I don't want to make you intelligent. Yeah, <laughs> contextual, what? Rudy. Contextual. Mm. Contextual. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But that, I, I, don't, I don't want to make that uh, difficult. No, but, but, but I like what you say. It's true. I take my inspiration out of daily life. Yeah, I, um, I'm not looking for complicated A4 uh, uh, intellectual stories. Uh, I, it's daily what I do, and it's a command, but it's also uh, a love for beauty, a love for stories mainly. And uh, yeah, you're right. That it's it's a daily life. I'm a daily life person. Yeah, that's why I drink uh, some alcohol. Cheers, <laughs> Ted. Lisbeth, do you have some uh, comments, some observation as a witness? Uh, well, I would say that um, um, that Ted can also be called the bad boy of jewelry. That's a position he likes to take. He is very critical, 
on what is happening in the jewelry world. He likes to kick, he likes to shout, he likes to give comments and critiques and sometimes this can frighten off younger artists. They, they think, wow, this is a crazy guy and why is he talking like this? But I have to say that you have changed over the years. When I met you the first time, you were more like a grumpy old man than you are now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but he's also someone who gives a lot of energy, I think, to colleagues as well, just because he is so critical, because you he makes you think about your own position. Mm -hmm. And um, energy is also something that um, is radiating from roots. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, it is true, he is sometimes like a, a magician. Um, but um, on the other hand, he keeps both his feet on the ground, I think. You can be esoteric, religions play an important role in your life, philosophies as well, but you keep your feet on the ground. You're very grounded as well. And that is what I like a lot because if it only becomes in the spiritual, I sometimes get lost, maybe because I don't have a Catholic background, but I'm Protestant. So that's a, a different kind of religion. So, um, yeah, I think that is important in your case. Yes, and we'll give the chance to Ruth and Ted to say uh, something about Lisbeth. <sighs> I will, I, first, I, I, will, I will give a comment on Lisbeth, on her, what she, on her observation. I think it's very interesting that she say that that grounded thing is, and I think when you are making work, uh, it can be uh, uh, a certain kind of looking into your belly, yeah, only only into your own personality. That doesn't work at all. You only you have to make work what is also universal, what is communicating with the outside world. And when you are not able to do that, then you miss the link with the with the with the other. People and with the with uh, the observer and the wearer and so on and and that's where I'm very aware of yeah yeah but you can start subjective from a very personal trauma or story sure. or sure but on the end it, it should yeah. end up in something that reaches more people than yeah. only yourself mm -hmm. because Absolutely. there are more more people who have the same uh, drama or oh, yeah. trauma sure. Oh. But you have to make it, you have to make it objective that other people understand it. Yeah. The personal should be universal in a way. Sure. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so uh, then you, you said you, you yes. want to say something about uh, uh, Lisbeth? Great. Yes, about Lisbeth. I would like to give the word to Ruth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! This is horrible. <laughs> he's really horrible. This, this, now, now you get directly. Uh, this will be working with the four of us in a class with students. Oh well, this is a little bit complicated. So I give the word on, <laughs> and so it is. Spend two years together. So. But no, but I. Uh, uh, and what I really admire on uh, Lisbeth is. Um, that she is able in words to become very clear and clean, yeah, shaping where it goes all about. And I think that is what, that's, that's a very, very strong uh, observation what she has. And she, she is able also to guide other people, to, uh, to say, uh, no, to guide people that they find also words for their own way of working and I think that is that is a gift that's really a gift there is only one negative thing what I have to say on Lisbeth and this, she's always saying I'm too busy I'm too busy I'm too busy <laughs> and, <laughs> so I, I forget all the time that I say to her you're not so busy but you have to plan your life better but <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I love it when I hear it all the time. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. 
Well, you know, I think it has to do with the fact what you just said about writing. For me, writing is a craft and it takes a lot of time because yeah, sure. every word and every sentence is thought about. And when I start writing uh, an article, for instance, for an artist or for a project, I often don't know where it will end. It, it, through the writing, I'm making, I'm finding my way in this project, in the work. And uh, so it's also like an adventure writing. Yeah. And that's maybe also why it takes so much time. Uh, so but, but, my time management uh, when I'm writing is indeed very bad, yeah, <laughs> very yeah. bad. No, but I think it is the, it's more or less the same on the moment when you are making a piece of jewelry, yeah? It's also that you don't know the end. The end. Mm -hmm. it, it's the best when you don't know the end, yeah? Even when you don't know where you want to go, but that there is something, yeah? Where, mm -hmm. you, where you have to work on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ed? Uh, well, well, I think um, very cl uh, clearly that Elisabeth has more qualities than one. Uh, I think the, the biggest one for me was, as a student, that she um, gave me a good kick in the ass for my first exhibition. She wrote an article in a newspaper, yes. and uh, she gave me a big kiss, a kick in the ass, and I was very happy about that after 10 you, years. Yes, you but were. It's right, but at that you moment, were, it was terrible. You were, at the moment when you get the kick, you were pissed. Mm. Yeah. And, yes. and, uh, so, and so, then you called me 10 years later and you said, Lisbeth, you are this woman who wrote and then you started to quote this article in the newspaper. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was really interesting. Yeah. yeah. So Lisbeth, uh, she, she is, is a, an artist with words. So she, but she's very also very good at analyzing and putting things in history. She has a huge database about what happened in jewelry. Uh, so she can reflect the jewelry that you make now. She can put it in a certain position uh, when she puts it in, in a time label, in a time. Um, so that's why it's so important that she takes part in our school because uh, uh, Ruth, Gijs and we are, uh, and Ek, me, we are more makers, doers, thinkers. But we, we, we are not very good in words. And uh, unfortunately, part of being a good artist is that you can put yeah. things in words uh, because that is at this time very necessary with, with all the internet things, with books, with articles. Yeah. Words are, uh, we try to avoid them as artists, but we cannot. I think especially for jewelry, we, we have to take care the jewelry uh, it can be um, recognized or can be understood because most people in the world who, who are familiar with art are not familiar with art jewelry. Some people hate that name, but mm -hmm. um, so the writing part could be a part of making things clear. Why is this steel 3D printed ring 600 euros? I mean, People will say, are you crazy? Oh, it's a multiple also. So yeah, it's an unlimited multiple. 600? <laughs> Scandalous. But if you can put things in uh, a certain range of what uh, jewelry can be, and, and unfortunately, people still uh, look at, okay, jewelry is a diamond and a golden ring, and that is 6,000 euros, no problem. So we have to make a database, a bank, we have to make a described jewelry so that people can refer to the meaning yeah. of jewelry and why is a jewelry piece 10,000 euro and it's made from iron? Yeah. Thank you, it was, it was really, really warm and so intimate to listen to you all and so important to, to hear everything. No elective affinities which I uh, decided to take after I was reading 
not everything, but almost uh, all have you said about uh, Masierad and the fact that on a professional level, you could go also like water and oil, if you know what I mean. So it's not selective, it's elective, you know, just to be a little bit more clear because uh, sometimes the English can be confusing uh, in my case. So <clears throat> as I understand on a, on a personal level, you can go like water and wine, you know, but uh, on some professional level, and I think this is a very interesting example or something to, to be known about, you can have different opinions, you can have different experiences and you can fight for your opinions and so on. And I will start with the first questions now. Are you very good friends in real life? Because myself, I'm a more of a visual person. So I saw last year the Instagram of uh, Masiera and I said to myself, wow, that's so nice. You know, four very good friends, they started a project. They started a school. I needed to read more about it after and to understand better, you know, but this is because I'm just reading visually things, you know. So I said to myself, that's very nice. We need that now. We need that in these times of pandemic, you know, people, they get together and they start a community and they start a project and so on. But what I was reading after is that your masterclass it's based a lot on your different opinions that you all share between you and with the world. So did you know before that having these different opinions will lead you to construct the structure of the masterclass? Uh, maybe I will. <clears throat> First of all, um, we are not friends at all, more or less, maybe because of the last four years, we had to work together a lot and we had to come to the statements. So just different opinions, yeah, are coming more together. But friends is something different than opinions, yeah. And, and I think uh, on the moment, well, I, I, I invite uh, Lisbeth, uh, Ted and Gijs on a lunch and there I asked them if they thought, uh, can, we, uh, can we start uh, something uh, in, uh, in an, an education on jewelry? And the first thing they directly said, oh, no, we don't want to do this because this is too tricky. This is too complicated. This is really not what we want. And also, why should we do that? Because we are too old and we had all have already our educational yeah, moments and things like that. Uh, but uh, after a while, and I have to say there was good wine and there was a salmon and uh, it was delicious. There was a small movement, yeah, like, oh, well, mm, 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 maybe, yeah, we can do it. And I think the interesting thing, I think, is that we are so different, that we all, the four of us, are different and have a totally different opinion. And that means that students get also these different opinions yeah, to, into the education struggle too. So I think um, it's, it's not fighting in real, but we are fighting in positions, I think that, and that's, I think, very interesting to, uh, to see what happened. So, but, but this is a natural thing, because if you are young, you come from school, then you are um, uh, not each other friends, but you are... Uh, Enemies. Concurrency. Yeah, confrontational. No, um, because if Rudy sells a, a brooch in a gallery, then the customer cannot buy a brooch from me. <laughs> so uh, you are each other's. Um, I see. What do you call that? Uh, in competition. Uh, I mean, like. In competition. In competition. Yeah, it is also very funny. We have uh, Ted and I uh, have the same uh, uh, constructor who is making exhibitions for us. And that's <laughs> our big friend, uh, Robert. And then I met Robert and then he said, yeah, Ted li likes you, but your work is horrible. Yeah, That's what Robert had said. So it's, it's something 
this this kind of things are happening all the time and it's great yeah i think it's and i think the most interesting is that we that we are not uh cuddling each other that that we are not yeah no, no. We're still confronting yeah. but on different bases so not like 30 years ago that we had this competition thing we also had competition thing because if you finish school you still fight and do to find your own concept your own story your your so you have to discuss a lot you have to be grumpy to the work of others in order to make your own work clear and what and, and your own to find your own handwriting um yeah but and, and i think that is the power now that we have that we are going beyond this competition and that we are still critical to each other still ask questions uh, uh, and this sharpens our mind to be a good uh, to bring a new way of teaching and i think that is what the jewelry field i think and we think needs that's why we started all this uh, we're not looking for copies we don't looking for copies of rudy and uh, ted Norton and case parker and lisbeth we are looking for new mm -hmm. people new thinking new thoughts new 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 entrances new uh, confrontations yeah. so we we can go beyond our own ego because we already established our own name yeah well i did i don't know if rude did this but no, no. <laughs> that did it maybe um has bakker choose uh, louise schouwenberg who is a, a philosopher and a fine artist and he knows her already since his time he was teaching at the Design Academy in Eindhoven. Yeah. Um, um, Ruud chose uh, Paul Adi. He's from Scotland, lives in Munich, and he's a, a very young, fresh and quite rebellious artist. And I choose Monica Gaspar, who is uh, a, a theoretic um, teacher. Uh, she teaches in Luzern in Switzerland. She is from Spain, from Barcelona, but she lives in Switzerland. And I know her since my time or since our time at the Think Tank for the Applied Arts. And there I really came under, um, under um, I was impressed by her. She's uh, 17 years younger than I am. Um, and she, um, she takes a very broad view on design and crafts. She's not really a jewelry person the way I am. So I think that is also very important. I'm just thinking, you know, listening to you now that probably we have uh, in the audience like young artists, you know, we, we have to say that maybe, you know, they look up to you. And um, I have a feeling, you know, that I don't know if in your master class there is a subject related to, you know, how will you advise a student or an alumnus to, to, to navigate the world of creative jewelry, you know, to, to you, they enter this field of jewelry, of creative jewelry, you know, and somehow if they don't have a GPS already, you know, they, they are not trained before or something, they, they need to, to be successful in terms of visibility and finance you know i mean making a master is not quite cheap you know but do you think that you will succeed in touching subjects like selling your jewelry how to approach galleries museums and so on? what do you think ted um well th this was also a part of our motivation to do this that we have huge network, huge experience with galleries, with uh, uh, newspapers, with people all over the world. And we'd like to give that to young people because this sounds a little bit dramatic. We're getting old. Um, and there is an urge to give our knowledge to, uh, uh, to young people so they, they can uh, become famous. Well, and, and maybe I can add something to it because I also see it, Sorry. <laughs> I see it as my task also to, to somehow um, 
to, to study, to explore this infrastructure of jewelry. Um, how does it look like? How does a gallery work? And things like that, because I always have experienced that most students have no idea about this world. So it's very good to explore this together and to, in this way, maybe find out where you want to be, be as a young artist. Maybe it's better to, to start your own label or to start a, 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 a collective or things like that. For me, the gallery, the art gallery or the jewelry gallery is not the holy grail. Um, I think there are other possibilities for designers, artists to earn their money if they want or to make jewelry and to find a market for it. And therefore, I think it's important to first study this infrastructure and see what is happening there, what connections are there, etc. Yeah, but I think also uh, very important is that the starting point is that you have to find your way. What do you want to express? What do you want to bring into that world? And I think that is the, the main yeah, uh, problem because no one knows. It's a blanket white paper yeah, where you start to create something. And that is that stays all the time like that. But I think uh, we, uh, the four of us, we have certain kind of tools to give the students yeah, uh, a certain kind of way to find their way to 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 crack the brain or to 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 give input and that's also an important thing we we are not saying that most of the mar, uh, uh, masters are going that the student has to come up with a project and we think first we want to give input for one year and then on the second year, we do uh, uh, that the student is creating their own project. And, yeah. And if there is a student who says that I'm not interested in this whole gallery thing, I want to make a piece that 10 million people want to have in this world, I will say, I'm going to help you with that. Because mm -hmm. that is also jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and this is what we strive for. We strive for diversity. I think um, one of the dilemmas uh, of the young artists, the young designers, mm -hmm. is that today um, it's really hard to be sustainable with your own creations, you know. I mean, you can decide to make a commercial brand and you know that you make commercial. Commercial is not bad, you know. Commercial is what it is. So, but if you go to make a master with four great artists, you know, you go there for the educational part, but you train yourself in being creative and conceptual and going for the high purpose, like entering museums and galleries. No, and no, no, that's, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Because we, we, we really want to, look at the students where they, where they come with that and that they create their uh, work what is maybe uh, a commercial or in series or uh, design yeah or art and i think in that case it's the fantastic thing that Gijs, yeah he's very strong in this uh, uh, in this uh, Design thinking, yeah, uh, about what a design jewelry uh, could be, uh, but he is really trained to to guide people in in commissions and into uh, and into design, and I think that is the quality, a high quality. I, I don't mind if somebody starts painting after two years, but he should do it with the soul, with the preciousness. Mm -hmm with the uh, 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 typical thing of jewelry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if somebody comes up with a skyscraper after two years, fine, but it should have the quality of this yeah. typical jewelry thinking, feeling, doing. I understand there is no pressure to make jewelry in your master class. This is why I understand. <laughs> but I have, um, I have 
because what you are saying, like Ruth and Lisbeth, um, makes me think to a discussion that I had with uh, Lin Chung. Um, she's also a tutor in Central San Martin, and um, she was saying it in a very, very profound way, you know, like um, you heard around yourself and sometimes even the teacher telling you that, you know, you should follow your heart, you know, you should discover yourself, you should follow your heart. And um, I think these days, it, everything goes against it. Because you have to make money. Mm. Or, or knowledge. Mm. You have to make money if you don't have money. That's very simple, you know. So yeah, if you're right. not yeah. already rich or you have your parents or your relatives sustaining you, you know, and paying for the studies and paying for the rent and everything, you know. But, yeah, but, but I don't think that, that this is contradictory. Even if you follow your heart, you can, you can probably end up somewhere where you are able to make money because yeah. you, because you are following your heart because yeah. you are staying true to yourself and yeah. um so i i don't think there's a con contradiction there not necessarily no i agree uh, with uh Elizabeth, absolutely yeah, I, I i agree too but what i what i wanted to ask and i didn't finish my question is because you 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 are all people with experience life experience professional experience in jewelry you know how how will you say, but be short, you know, I mean, like we don't have to be so long uh, in all the questions. Um, when a student comes to you and he feels, he or she feels confused, you know, he feels that she, after one year, maybe she or he is not very sure about it, you know, how do you start the GPS? Mm -hmm. How do you help that student um, finding his voice, finding his heart again, you know? Did you experience that before? Because you always, uh, I mean, you always, you've been teachers before, you know? What methods do you use? I mean, only if you can tell it in a very short, pragmatic way, because we don't have too many times. <laughs> well, I, I think we have to be careful because if we um, give you the solution for that, nobody comes to our school, so. Uh... <laughs> I, I, That's you know, very I, <laughs> there's, there's one there. thing that is very important and that is empathy yeah. we have to be open to the and students encouragement. they should be uh, they should shouldn't feel any uh, restriction to contact us and to share their doubts because you need to talk with each other or um, it is about communication very important. And guidance. Guidance, yeah. We're not coming up with solutions. We're not going to say you should do this and this and this. No, you should find out yourself what you have to do because then you become your own teacher. And that is on the end what you have to be. I, I mean, I'm 30 years now in business and still I have to teach myself and still I have to <clears throat> talk with myself. Yeah. Uh, and this is what you have to learn. How can I be the critical one on my own work. And we're not talking about taste. We're not talking about aesthetics. Um, but on the, but I, I want, when it comes to GPS, I start to walk with students. For walk. example, yeah. Mm -hmm. Walk. 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 Yeah. 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 Swim. Start walking together. <laughs> fly. I fly with students. Yeah. <laughs> I start swimming. walking and then, the, well, okay, walking in the fields and maybe there is coming some words or whatever. And yeah, maybe it happened or not. Uh, but I, there, it, there, is no, there is not a recipe of uh, that you get it correctly, but, but openness and, and, and to give them trust. Yeah, and again, I think we, four of us, are willing to share to 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 give our things, and that's why we started this. And that is uh, now. Well, the best is that students start to teach us. Are we waiting for that? Yeah, because we're getting old and and dementia, so uh, we have to learn again. Yeah, but on the moment when the students start to teach us, then oh. it's turned around, and then they come up with their own soul, with their own 
experience, yeah. and that's exactly what needed. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lisbeth, um, I saw on Instagram something that I really like. It you know you you are using the word uh, jeweleriness. Yeah. Could you spell it well. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you choose the jewelry wood hood? Sorry, like brotherhood or. <laughs> Um, because jewelry ness is more um, like it's it's a word that is comparable with kindness. Um, so it, it is more about a feeling, I think, and mm. hood is more about uh, a state of being. So I think there's a difference there. But actually, I didn't really research it. it, it I took it intuitively. Intuitively. Um, and even at the time when I started using it, I didn't even know if the word existed. I couldn't find it in a dictionary. So I just thought, okay, I just- uh, I like it a lot. And, and see what happens with it. Yeah, it catch my attention because uh, it made me think from your point of view, if you feel that in this jewelry field, there is a much more need for brotherliness, sisterliness, which I find it uh, quite more sensitive uh, against the sisterhood or brotherhood, you know, sisterliness uh, and brotherliness in jewelry field, you know. How do you perceive, because you've been so many times in jewelry field, are people making communities easily? Do they get together? Do they share? Because what you do now, all four of you, you are sharing, you know, okay, people come and pay, but what you basically do, you teach and share, you know, but besides that, in the, in the surrounding that you are in Netherlands, do you feel that there is a need for sisterliness or brotherliness? I think so. I, I think that in the, the jewelers tend to work on their own, in their own space, and I think it's so important that they collaborate, that they find ways to collaborate with others. And um, I've been to countries like New Zealand where sharing working spaces with, for instance, six people is really um, normal. And this is not really how, maybe it's changing a bit in the Netherlands, but it doesn't used to be like that. And we, we just have now the first collective in the Netherlands, which is a shop, a pool in Amsterdam, and 15 people um, are in this um, uh, collaboration. Um, but it's the first time that it actually really happens. Um, I, I remember that Paul de Rey, the, the, the one who, the owner of Galerie Ra, he's also part of this collective. And when he uh, started the discussions with the others, he said, oh, this is so difficult. We tried to do this 35 years ago and it didn't happen and it was impossible. Suddenly now there is, there is room for it. Um, people are more inclined to work together. And I think that's very important. Yeah, but yeah. this is also due to the fact that uh, compared with 30 years ago, we have complete different network. I yeah. mean, you have uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, in fact, you don't need, hardly don't need any more a gallery owner because you just start your own shop on Facebook mm -hmm. and that's it. But I'm really searching for completely, totally new experience to find, to mm -hmm. find audience, to change the whole thing. Because this whole people, who are maybe for our jewelry interesting, they're gray, yeah, they're becoming old, the gallery is becoming older. So I think this whole system will disappear. In yeah. five years, it's over, yeah, or 10, it's completely done. In mm -hmm. our country, not in the world. But no, in no, 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 in the you Netherlands. Five years. Sure. You said five years? In five years? In the I Netherlands, think, yes. I think in five years, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's over. But I think for, for me, it's very important that the younger generation find new ways. And what those ways are, they can be open, but they have to, they have to really go deeply into investigation. What 
is the need and how can I reach a new audience? And that says maybe also that the work is different or whatever, but uh, that I can't, I can't give that a guideline, but I think it's very important. Yeah. Well, you know, Studio 3000 in Amsterdam is also, um, that's also an initiative that, that goes beyond the gallery. It is three people sharing a studio, inviting other artists, even hairdressers or whatever, tattoo artists, and they make uh, two times a year an exhibition and invite mainly their own network. But then I mean family, friends, uh, people who live in their neighborhood, people who they have no idea about contemporary jewelry. And yeah, these initiatives are great, I think. Very important. They, they are great, I think, but not substantial enough. No, it's not sustainable or whatever. It's something you do because you're enthusiastic about something. Yeah. You want but, to but, but if you look, how much money goes around in the jewelry, and now we're talking about the conservative jewelry, diamonds, gold, mm. platina, is uh, 100 billion? I have no idea. Wow. How, how much we take from that cake? Little piece. <laughs> yes. so let's take the whole cake. Mm. And I think that is what we should learn how to penetrate. Let's go to Cartier, do a project there. I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> we all go to Cartier and we say, we come here for two days and we're going to make you a nice new ring collection. Let's see what happens. Yeah. yeah. So everybody should go to Cartier. Yeah. <laughs> and tell that to the different. people that, hey. What? You have to be secret uh, by your IDs because now 200 people, 250 people are calling Cartier. <laughs> I, or, I, I already have a Mercedes band from Cartier, so I can do that. <laughs> I have a question for you, Ted. Oh, or, again. For you, but we have uh, many questions. Maria is making a, a kind of a top. Why it's so difficult to name what we do. Art, jewelry, contemporary jewelry, we are always trapped in this. Like Ted said, there are people who hate, who, who hate the name of art jewelry, you know, because probably they feel threatened by it or overwhelmed, you know. Why it's so difficult to name what we do? It's not something bad, you know, I mean, but I'm just asking why it's difficult. Well, mainly because we lost, um, I mean, if I go to Africa, my God, it's paradise. If you talk about jewelry, if I go to other countries, to ethnic cultures, but what, yeah, I wear a little thing around my, uh, my wedding ring because mm -hmm. I, I like to hide it. I don't want to have it on my fingers. <laughs> but, um, we are not used anymore to wear jewelry. Uh, so only a nice diamond and a golden thing, that's it. Mm -hmm. so, hmm? A pearl necklace. A pearl necklace, uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we lost the contact with jewelry. And the funny thing is that jewelry was the first medium for mankind to start with. We didn't start with a design chair or with a painting. No, we started with jewelry because the guy who catched a lion, he hit the teeth out of his face and he was wearing it. I mean, so jewelry uh, was one of the first medium that people uh, found their identity and expressed their uh, thinking and doing and feeling. And we lost that. So. Uh, of course, if you tell me that you want to put a boat through your nose and go in the street, no. Um, so I, I'm also, as a jewelry maker even, far away from wearing jewelry. I mean, we have like in Holland, we have fishermen. They wear a golden earring. Um, and if the fisherman in, in, in the past was found on the beach, uh, uh, drowned, the people who would find him, they would pay his uh, funeral from the gold. Still, these people wear them, but they have no fishing boats anymore. Still, they wear them. So there are just a few people who still have a relationship, fundamentally a relationship with jewelry. 
Yeah. And for the rest, no. it's a strange thing. Nobody knows it. No, but no. I, I, I think I can tell a lot about the history of jewelry and oh, how yeah. jewelry once was something that was worn by men equally and yeah. women and children. It yeah. used to be of everyone until yeah. the 19th century. And I think in the, we, we are still um, um, under the, the influence of developments that took place in the 19th century. Because, for instance, in this period, art history also was, um, how do you say, it, well, it started in the 19th century. In art history, jewelry plays no role, maybe a little bit in archaeology, but for the rest, no. And it is something that is seen as only for women. Um, it's not really important. It's discriminated. And I think this is a big problem because what you say, jewelry is not really part of most people's life. Yeah, they sometimes have a wedding ring or a medallion, but That's it's it. not um, not in that sense really accepted. It's a bit seen as unimportant, not necessary. Um, and and I think therefore this whole jewelry field is so big we have difficulties to also yeah explain what we are doing in this field. Um, it is somewhere in between art and design and everyday life and how can you explain it is it has not a real history maybe the history is our nouveau Jugendstil jewelry. Yeah, the but, yeah, but yeah. it's not a strong tradition that we can build upon. So okay, I understand it, but it's shit. I want to say that jewelry is jewelry, and yeah, I I want to make what I want to make. Come on, that is the most yeah, important no, thing. You you are absolutely right, and actually, I don't want to explain the whole time why I call it this or that. I think it's not important. Um, not the anymore. way we want to call it, and um, I I really love jewelry. I really love fashion jewelry. I love uh, high end. Yeah, jewelry. I, I really, this whole decoration on the body is fantastic. And if it's like this or that, or name this or name that, that this is shit. Sometimes you do have to explain sure. what yeah, you are doing. Um, and that's always difficult. <laughs> it's just difficult. I don't have an answer. I just try my best. <laughs> think uh, maybe in the future you will take in consideration to have some online courses open to many others or you just focus on the master class only with the students accepted there well uh, partly yeah now there is one thing i think first of all i'm always saying i, I want to uh, lick and feel and sniff <laughs> on someone because <laughs> when you don't meet people in reality and you don't know it's very difficult to do an online course because that it takes 10 times more before you you have to smell you have to get it partly uh, it can be done online but also uh, part has to be in one-to-one -one confrontations uh, like Ruth says it's important to well, I think to smell each other, I don't know, that's rude uh, <laughs> wish. But to see each other in the eye, and, and, and uh, I mean, that, that's a different way than what we're yeah. doing. Read the ending, which will finish with a very small quiz, fill in the blanks. But before that, uh, maybe, maybe you noticed it yesterday that Instagram was taken by storm with a Lady Gaga wearing a goldish brooch. What do you think about it? Perfect. Yes, love, love it. I was jealous that it was not my brooch. Ah. She, but she apparelli, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's she a, has a great design. Just. I, I, I once had a, a talk uh, on paper with uh, uh, not Marilyn Monroe, but Ava Gardner. No, Liz no, Taylor. not that. Liz um, Taylor. The which is on the rest of you, the, the, the uh, Lady Gaga, no, no, the the the, the other, uh, uh, uh no, forgotten, forgotten, forgotten name, 
Okay. Uh, and I, I, I sent her a picture of a bag I made. Madonna with a pearl necklace. Oh, it was, oh, uh, and she wrote back, she said, Ted, I love your bag. I thought, all right, please send it to me. And then I said, well, you don't want to discuss the price. And she said, no, 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 I never pay. I always get gifts. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And did did you I do? Reach? What did I do? You send it. No, no. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> could have planned it. And maybe she was on television with it, and then yeah. I would be in my private jet now. <laughs> <laughs> and now the quiz. Who wants to start first? Doesn't matter. Jewelry is. Ted, I have you on my screen. Jewelry is. I, I have to complete it? Yes, yes. Fill in the blanks. Jewelry is boring until now. <laughs> <laughs> Great one. Rude. Love. Love? Yeah. Love. Jewelry is love. Oh, Lisbeth? No. Jewelry is uh, ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. Great one, too. Now, the second one. Uh, you have to imagine that the pandemic, the COVID, it's over, officially over, everywhere in the world. What is the first Thing you will do, Lisbeth? Oh, first thing I will do, probably go to a museum or a theater. <laughs> Museums are open, right? No, no everything ah. is closed here. Everything is Everything, closed. already for months. Okay, Ted? I would go dancing with my wife. <gasps> Amazing, <laughs> me too. Ruth? I go for uh, dinner with my husband. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah, I hope so, yeah. Yay. And the third one, uh, which is the most recent and loved book that you read? Mm. Oh, my Rude. God. <laughs> From <read>. your beer. <laughs> uh, it could be science fiction. It could be on July. Dark, the dark night of, uh, but now I'm... I will go to Kamuzako, the Japanese guy. After dark. Mm. After dark. Yeah. We'll search it on the internet. Ted? Ted, you are still searching for the Ted's last book you loved? He's are you with us? Ted? <laughs> Lisbeth. Ted is um, well, at the moment, I'm reading a book by a Dutch book by Erik Ader, and it's about his brother Bastian Ader, who was a conceptual artist who um, took a small sailing boat and wanted to sail from America to Europe and got lost and was found months later dead, of course. First, they found his boat, then his body or no his body was never found but anyway um yeah this book is not only about his brother but this artist this conceptual artist ha has always fascinated me because he was always doing very strange things like uh, um, taking his bicycle and riding himself and bicycle in the water in the canal in amsterdam or falling from a window so um, very conceptual and this sailing trip was part of a conceptual work that would ex that would be three parts and one part would be music as well so very interesting but the book is also about the life of Erik Ader so the mm. younger brother who is who wrote the book beautiful uh, I think this is it. If you have time, please read in the chat, uh, in the chat, uh, uh, questions and comments. Uh, they are beautiful people, which they express their feelings there. So if you want to take your time and for all of uh, all of you, which are still with us now, uh, our second Zoom, it will be probably in the middle of February and the theme, it will be fairs. You know, wow. to organize a fair. Okay. Okay. And I think it's really important to talk about fairs. So I hope I will have uh, with me 
Hoya Barcelona, Sirad from Amsterdam, Collect from London, and... Oh, that fair. Oh, I saw fear. Okay. Oh. Fear of fair. So this is the title. <laughs> Here, I thought yeah. that, that was great. So, um, just a minute. Uh, I will love to, to hug you all right now. So I will okay. just digitally giving you my hug. What, hey. was the, what was the third question you had? <laughs> the last book you read and loved. The last book could be science fiction, could be <laughs> I think it was Post Poskovsky, a Russian writer. Poskovsky. Burkowski. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, but then Very we have a question on you. Yes. Why did you uh, why we uh, agree on this interview? Because you had such a, a extremely provocative questions, <laughs> but they're all not on online today. Why did you quit them? Uh, sorry, who wasn't online? No, well, you, did, you didn't ask this question about why are we old, why are we uh, yeah. white and <laughs> not black and to less ah. female and things like that. You didn't ask that today. Well, we can do it now with everybody uh, unmuted, yeah. you know. It's for me easy. I'm gay and I choose a queer. So as Paul Adi, so I'm out of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's too easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Maybe for another Zoom, Ruth. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but but I, can, I can say that for me, it, it was very important that I choose a female partner. Um, because I thought there were too many men and I sometimes had to fight those men and their egos. Um, so um, for me, it was important and still is very important. I have found my soulmate, female. It's so important. I yeah. also go for a, for a woman. Yeah, very good. Uh, to find a good balance in, in our team. But also because I think that women are much more clever than men. <laughs> <laughs> All women will love you. They already love oh. you. I hope so. so charming. <laughs> yeah, you're really charming. That you know. How to no, do. it's time that women take over. I mean, come yeah, on. Okay, they do in America already. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't need to help them. No, okay. <laughs> you're self-sufficient. <laughs> yes, I, I can say the question anyway. I mean, one of my question was if uh, there is a need uh, for more visibility in the jewelry field for women. I mean, this is such a debate in America and um, I just wanted their opinion because, you know, it's a little bit everywhere right now. I mean, and I think it's, it's important, you know, I mean, let's say even in my country, you know, to have even more women artists in museums and uh, oh, yeah. in collections and everywhere, you know. So it, I feel it as a problem, yeah, mm. the more a problem that all the men are out of this profession. That is really a, a problem at the moment because I really love the balance between male and female because it gives a totally other uh, uh, energy. And you see in a lot of art schools that only women are doing the jewelry department. And that's, I think, painful. Yeah. <laughs> Rudy, I think we should stop thinking in male and female. Only in the middle. No, we're thinking in, we are humans. And yeah. this thing about male or female is, is from the, the last century, uh, 100 years ago. We are all gender. Yes, and uh, with this beautiful, I mean, Ted, you, you have such a, such a talent in uh, ending things on a high note, you know? Oh, thank you. You know, I mean, really. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, it was a tremendous pleasure and uh, I, I'm really happy you know so thank, thank you uh, Ben for this you, you did a very good preparation thank you We're very happy for that and that you took us serious and uh, we hope <laughs> to you. meet you soon somewhere yes uh, definitely you know I, I, I will stay in the jewelry field I love it too much okay good. 
<laughs> like we do. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank, thank you. you very much. And thank you all for being with us. To us. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. For being with us. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Is you're right? Yes, he had a double appointment. Yeah, it was a really uh, it very is. yeah, it was a pity indeed. Yeah. Yes, we think so. We think too. Anyway, was... you you made up for it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Thank Mila. you so much. Eh? Okay. Much. Hey, I'm. I think I'm leaving. Yeah, I'm I okay. smell someone is cooking dinner, so oh, I'm going yeah. to ask this. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Hey, hey, then, thank you very much for in doing this uh, whole uh, hosting, and uh, it was fantastic that you did it. Thank you to you. You are the initiator. Pleasure for us to do this. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye. 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 Kisses. <laughs> <laughs>